This is Jason Dunn from Digital Home Thoughts and here's my second video on the Dell uh, Desktop Studio Hybrid. Um, I thought I would do a follow-up video just really quickly here and uh, address some of the uh, questions that I've seen in uh, YouTube, on YouTube and elsewhere. So uh, one of the first things that somebody was asking about uh, is the um, optical drive wasn't readily apparent. So the optical drive is actually a slot loading drive which uh, goes right here. So it doesn't have a traditional you know, pop-out drive, you actually would just load the slot, uh, the DVD or CD into the slot here. This is similar to uh, Dell's um, XPS notebooks, their new studio line, so slot loading is something that Dell is obviously um, pursuing quite heavily. Someone else pointed out that there is no uh, there's no pink uh, microphone jack back here, and uh, that's correct. Um, there's certainly you know a lot of microphones that are still using 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks or for microphones, but there are a lot of microphones that are switching over to USB. So I can't really blame Dell for not including a microphone jack. I mean, it might have been nice to have, but you know the truth is is that you have to make sacrifices to get the overall chassis size uh, down. So I think that Dell probably made the right decision. Someone else was asking about what it looks like on the inside. So if you undo a screw uh, right over here, the uh, red piece slides out. Oh, and I should I should make a note too on the fact that it was red. Um, I basically made a mistake. If I would have looked more closely at the Dell, uh, all the Dell photos, I would have seen that it did have this translucent shell. On the first Dell press photo that I saw, um, and it's not really a photo, it's more like a, you know, a hyper-realistic art artistic rendering, the red looked like it was a high gloss uh, kind of candy coated shell where some of the other ones were transparent. So I actually thought that maybe Dell was doing multiple finishes, but it turns out that they weren't. Now, if you uh, undo a screw right here, the uh, chassis will actually uh, come out. At least it's supposed to come out. There we go. <laughs> that took a bit more effort than I thought. So this is what the Studio Mini looks like on the inside. Um, you know, my first impressions are that it looks it looks a lot like a laptop. I mean, you know, everything is obviously really, really compact here. So we have uh, a small fan, heat sink, um, the optical drive. So this is a uh, it's essentially a, a slot loading laptop optical drive. You can see it's it's not very thick here, but that's one of the biggest components here. And as far as everything else goes, um, pretty much everything is underneath the optical drive. That you know, uh, if I if I took this out, uh, there might be a way to uh, you know access it. But I don't really want to disassemble this because I need to use it. I'll leave it to other braver folks who want to uh, take apart their unit. But essentially, uh, the RAM and the hard drive and the CPU, everything is going to be underneath here. And in fact, that's probably what this this uh, this heatsink here. I can see uh, the copper tubing going underneath, so they may have actually integrated some sort of uh, larger heat sink, and then this is sort of this sort of takes the heat from various components underneath here, and then it puts it out through the fan. Um, I haven't fired it up just yet. Uh, I haven't had time. I'm going to do that right after this video here, so I haven't actually had a chance to check out the uh, fan speed, but that is or the fan volume rather. But that's at the top of my list of things to do. Now, uh, one of the other questions that people were asking about was, um, you know, oh, I, I wish it came with a faster CPU, blah, blah, blah. But I actually specifically chose a relatively um, low-powered configuration. I didn't want to, you know, spend um, 1800 bucks on this computer. You can get the, uh, lap, the uh, desktop hybrid with an Intel Core 2 Duo T9500. That is the 2.6 gigahertz, 800 megahertz bus, 6 meg of cache. So that is a very powerful you know, CPU out of the Core 2 Duo line. That will cost an additional $625 uh, Canadian. That's on Dell's website. And the US pricing is going to be virtually identical. Uh, you can get up to uh, 4 gigs of RAM added. You can get up to 320 gigabytes of a hard drive space all 5400 RPM drives, and you can also get a Blu-ray drive added, as well as an 802.11n um, mini card that would actually go inside the chassis here. If you pimp out the uh, Studio Hybrid all the way, it'll cost you uh, just a bit over $1,700 Canadian, and I think the US pricing is gonna be very similar. So, you can actually get a fairly powerful version of this, um, of this desktop computer if you're willing to spend the money. But, and here's the big but, this is in no way, shape, or form a gaming desktop computer. Uh, you have no option other than the uh, Intel, uh, the X3100, I believe is the uh, GPU. I don't have it in front of me, but that's essentially it. Now, uh, my research led me to believe that the X3100 does actually do uh, hardware-assisted 
um, decoding for high definition video. So that's going to be one of the things uh, that I'm going to be testing because uh, being able to decode high definition video is really important to me. Now, um, if that's not the case, then this may be going right back to Dell because um, it doesn't do what I need it to do. One of the other things that somebody asked when I when they saw that I mentioned um, I was going to be using it uh, as a, uh, a media center computer, there were some people that said, oh, well, you know, you can't use it as a media center computer um, without having a TV tuner. That's right, you can't record TV unless you go with an external solution. But what I'm going to be doing is uh, I already have a media center computer uh, with a TV tuner that's recording my TV shows downstairs. Uh, this is going to be going uh, in my family room, it's going to be hooked up to a 50-inch um, LG Plasma TV that I that I just purchased. It's brand new, um, and uh, so essentially, this is going to be. It's not going to be a media center extender, but I'm not looking to really capture media or store a whole lot of media on this device. This is going to be more uh, like a strictly like a, a, a playback device. But I did, of course, want to have the uh, the optical drive in here so I could play back, um, you know, DVDs. I did not go for the Blu-ray because I think Blu-ray media is still way too expensive. Um, but that's essentially how I'm going to be using this device. Uh, there's certainly lots of people that you know this particular device just doesn't measure up to what they need. Uh, you know, if you need to use it for gaming, this is uh, not the device for you. If you need to, you know, uh, store a terabyte worth of data, this is not the device for you. Um, this is a uh, a relatively um, you know, low power device in its base configuration. I think this makes a great desktop computer for a lot of average consumers, you know, people that just want to, you know, edit their photos, uh, you know, watch movies. I mean, again, with the proper CPU, you can even do a lot of, you know, video editing on it. You're going to be constrained a little bit by, you know, the hard drive size uh, and whatnot, but it does come, you can get a fairly powerful CPU. So that's about it for right now. I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to uh, cut over and just do uh, a couple of minutes um, showing it in action so you can check out the, uh, the fan volume and I'm also going to talk about the uh, heat issues if there are any uh, once I get this all fired up. So hold on. Alright, so here is the Dell Studio Hybrid. Uh, it's all set up. I thought I would uh, turn it on and we'll see what the uh, you know, fan noise is like and see what the overall setup process is like. Well, it's really quiet so far. Uh, the best way to you know test a uh, test the fan system speed is by um, or the system volume is of course by uh, putting it under load. So once it's actually all booted up, I'll be um, going ahead and uh, putting it under load. You know, trying it with some high definition video files, um, etc. What I'm probably going to do here is I'm going to go through the whole setup process, but I will uh, time shift it so I will you know kind of accelerate it. Uh, my camera is having a hard time locking onto the screen because there's uh, there's nothing there. Um, yeah, so uh, I will uh, speed this part up, and you can check it out in high speed. The setup is uh, loading the desktop right now, and I'm going to just zoom in up at the top here because you can actually see that uh, this is Dell's new um, uh, kind of command bar. This is actually designed by uh, Stardock software uh, for for Dell, um, so it's kind of cool to see it in person. I'm not entirely sure how useful it'll be. I usually just you know use the Quick Start bar. Um, it's worth noting, I'll just zoom back over here to uh, the hybrid itself. Um, you can see that uh, when you turn on the unit, my camera's having a bit of a hard time focusing here. When you turn on the unit, uh, the, um, the it lights up, is what I'm actually trying to say. So down here, the word hybrid lights up, the uh, power button, and then there's a hard drive activity light. And I'll just turn it over on its side here that Dell logo right there uh, also lights up. It looks like it's fairly subtle, you know, so hopefully in a home theater environment this wouldn't be, you know, too too irritating. Um, although I am kind of interested to know 
if you turn this thing on its side, of course, hybrid is going to be vertical. So that's actually kind of silly, but well, regardless. Now we'll go back up here and just take a quick peek at the desktop to see if anything interesting is happening. Uh, so that was, for anyone who cares about such things, that was maybe about 10 minutes or so to go from kind of the initial power up to the, uh, you know, waiting for the, uh, in, waiting for input from the user. Uh, so it's given me options for setting up, um, you know, product support, uh, setting up security, going on the internet. Um, so I'm just actually going to hit X on that and shut it down. So then now I am looking at my overall uh, Dell desktop. Um, I listened to the fan. I put my ear actually right up against it, and it is extremely, extremely quiet. In fact, my Dell laptop uh, is louder when it's under load. Um, I'll, I'll do a bit more testing, you know, just to make sure that the fan uh, is actually that quiet. But uh, first impression seems to be that, yeah, it really seems to be that, that quiet. So let's take a look here at the uh, Windows Experience Index. I'm just kind of curious, you know, to see uh, um, what this thing benchmarked at. So it looks like it's a, a three point, a three point one on the Windows Experience Index. I'll just zoom in here so you can uh, check that out. So it looks like the CPU scored a four point eight. The RAM is a four point four. Not surprisingly, the graphics performance is a 3.1, and uh, the primary hard disk is a 5.1. So the hard disk is actually, you know, pretty pretty decent. So uh, that's about it for right now. I'm going to um, test out the unit, and we're going to try to play. You know, I'm going to try some high definition video. Uh, obviously, going to see how loud it is when I put in a uh, a DVD. You know, kind of put it through put it through its paces, and uh, we'll see. Um, you know, if I like the Dell Studio Hybrid. Thanks for watching. Jason Dunn from Digital Home Thoughts.